We'll start off by looking at the DSing plugin, ProDS. It's a high quality 64 bit internal processing DSer that provides the option for up to four times linear phase oversampling. Now, let me just say a little about the oversampling option first. Because ProDS has to make very fast alterations to the audio level when reducing the sibilant areas of an audio file, a consequence of this is aliasing occurs, and this creates tiny amounts of distortion. Now, a way to help negate this is to use oversampling. I'm sure you're aware of what oversampling is, but just in case some of you watching this aren't sure, oversampling processes the audio at either two or four times than the host sampling rate. This much higher sampling rate helps to reduce the aliasing effect and the mild distortion. There is a negative to this though, in that using oversampling increases how much CPU is used, and additionally adds a little latency. Anyway, we'll get into this more later. For now, just know you set the oversampling rate here, at the foot of the interface. For now, let's work our way around the user interface and see where things are. I'll explain what the various parameters do here, and in the next couple of tutorials we'll see and hear them in action. So, in the main area here, well this is the real-time level display area. Now of course at the moment, because we've not got any audio running through it, we aren't going to see anything. But in the next couple of tutorials when we do send audio through it, we will see a representation of the waveform, and any sibilance that is DS'd will be clearly indicated here. That is, of course, if you've got it set up like this. You might not. You might have accidentally hit the display button here, and as you can see, that collapses this real-time level display from view. I'll click it once more to bring it back. OK, so what else do we get? Well, running across here horizontally, at the top, you can see that we can set up an A-B comparison, and this works in precisely the same way as any comparison a being that you have done in any other plugin. We'll get back to this as we progress as necessary. And then moving along to the right, well you'll see at the moment that ProDS is set up to the default setting. And all the parameters, the dials and the sliders and the buttons etc. are all set at this default. If you want to work your way through and see some of the presets, then click on here. And there, as you can see, we have two main categories. At the top we've got mastering and single vocal, which of course speak for themselves. The top option there, Mastering, has these two presets that you might want to use on a full mix. From that point on, of course, you would probably need to adjust the parameters to make it suit your material. And just underneath Mastering we have Single Vocal, and here we have a larger number of presets. Now just getting back to what I said a moment ago, if you start off with one of these presets and adjust it and make it your own, and consequently save it, but then at a later point you want to go back and restore the factory presets, well come down here to options, and then run down to that bottom option, restore factory presets. I see this warning message just checking with me that this is what I want to do. Now I'm going to hit cancel. By the way, if you want to change through your presets quickly, then by using these arrows here, scrolls you through them, and this one to the left reverses that scrolling process. OK, now I'm just going to click on here once more and go back to the default setting. And then I'll move down here to the bottom left hand corner to this basic controls area. And you can see it's dominated by these two large rotary dials. The first one here being the threshold. Now you can see with this threshold dial, when we are set to the default, which is focused on implementing this on a single vocal, then this rotary dial here allows us to dial in quite a large range. That said, if you want to quickly add in a threshold level, if you double click on it, then you can see in the little pop-up just below that you can now set your threshold manually. Or alternatively, of course, left click and drag the dial. If you've got a scroll wheel on your mouse, then you could use that too. Now as I say, this threshold is quite large. You can take it right up to the top at 0 dB, which effectively means no processing will take place, simply because the audio level is never going to go higher than 0 dB. But if you drag this down, perhaps down to minus 12 dB, then what this means is that any sibilant ducking that is going to take place, i.e. the de-essing, it will only operate on any signal that goes higher, in this case, minus 12 dB. You probably also notice this smaller dial here, situated at around about 10 or 11 o'clock on the main dial. Well, this is the audition triggering button, and if you engage it, you'll be able to hear on which parts of the audio, and that will be determined by the frequency area that you set. 
but on which parts of the audio get triggered and as a result of that, how much DSing takes place. You'll probably find as you work with ProDS that using this audition triggering button will help you set the threshold level. OK, now moving to the right and in combination with the threshold, we have this rotary dial and this is the range dial. And this determines by how much DSing takes place. So for example, it's set to 6 dB at the moment. So the signal, once it reaches your threshold level and goes higher than it, and within the frequency range that we set, well, any sibilant sounds will be attenuated by 6 dB. Of course, it works in exactly the same way as the threshold dial. Left click and reduce it so that no reduction takes place if you take it right down to 0 dB. Or the opposite extreme, you can take this up so that you reduce the sibilance by 24 decibels. Now that's quite considerable. I'm going to double click on the dial and once more, I can quickly type in the value I want to set this at. I'll reduce the sibilance by 3 dB. You'll notice underneath these two dials that we have these two sliders. These are the high and low pass sidechain filter sliders and they operate between 2 kHz right up to 20 kHz. And you'll also notice once we do send some audio through ProDS that to help us focus in on the particular places that are the most problematic, a real-time spectrum analyzer will illuminate in this area. And you'll see the brighter spots that light up are the most problematic S's. Now as you can see, once you have set your low and high pass sidechain filter sliders here, if you left click in between them, you can slide the frequency range between them and move to a different frequency area. You'll see at the moment that this slider is focused on 11.84 kHz, but adjusting it simply by left clicking and dragging, well, we can take this right to the right hand side so that it indicates off. And if you do move it to the far right hand side here, well, effectively you are disabling the low pass slider. Once more, if you left click on it, you can drag it to the left and the difference between the low and the high pass sliders there remain the same. You're simply sliding them along to catch a different frequency area range. Of course, the left slider works in exactly the same way. If you want to change its frequency, left click on it and drag and you'll see the actual frequency it's operating at just underneath. And to make things even easier, if you click on this button underneath, this one indicated as audition, well, once it's engaged, what you will only hear is the signal from the filtered side chain. Let's move across to the right now to these more advanced controls. We'll come across to where it says mode and you'll see we have four main buttons, single vocal, all round, wide band, and split band. Now, dependent on what you've got set here, either single vocal or all round, well, this will determine which algorithm gets used in the taming of any sibilance. If you have it set to single vocal, well, its name indicates this will work best on vocal files on their own, and this will very effectively split the audio in terms of the sibilance and the non-sibilance. Whereas by contrast, if you choose all round, FabFilter suggests this is used on entire mixes, as it will attenuate any sibilance within a full mix, for example, dependent on the frequency range set with the high pass and the low pass sliders in parallel with what we set the threshold. Now, one good way of checking this out is by coming up to your presets again and just study how FabFilter set these presets up. For example, if I choose the mastering option at the top there and then choose the high end transient limiting preset, you'll see now that all round has been chosen. We've moved away from wide band and we've gone to split band and accordingly the high pass and the low pass sliders are repositioned. Whereas if I come back up and choose a single vocal preset and maybe choose the bottom option, male wide band, now you'll see that the mode has been moved over to single vocal and we are working on a wide band as the preset name would suggest. Now this will make more sense as we progress over the next couple of tutorials. So just bear with me. Now underneath these four buttons is this sidechain button or rather these two sidechain buttons where we can choose to DS using an internal sidechain or an external sidechain. Most of the time, you're probably going to use the internal sidechain, letting ProDS work out which is the area that needs DSing. However, there might be occasions where you've got a different file or perhaps a copy of the same file that you want to use as an external sidechain to control your main audio file. FabFilter give a good example of this. Maybe you've got a vocal file that you've copied, but with the main version of the vocal file, you might have added a lot of processing. 
And this extra processing, whether it's a delay or reverb or some EQ or some heavy compression, well, if you were to send that signal through the sidechain to the internal sidechain, then you would get a dramatically different sound in terms of the de-essing than you would if you used the pristine version of the vocal and used that as an external sidechain trigger so that the processed vocal de-esses in a more natural way. If you want to quickly bypass the effect, by the way, just click on here. Let's move over to the right again, and you'll see the stereo link dial. And underneath that, you'll see the look ahead dial. Now I'm actually going to finish up for this tutorial, and as we progress over the next couple of tutorials, we'll see the stereo link and the look ahead dials in more detail. Okay, so as I say, I'll finish up for the moment, and I'll see you in a second.